Hey, it's Dr. Jordan Taylor, undergraduate exercise science program director and associate teaching professor at the University of Kansas. This is the final video in a three-part series where I'm discussing complex training and post-activation potentiation. Today, a lower body complex training workout session will be demonstrated so you can see how this type of training is performed to induce post-activation potentiation in a single workout. So I've brought in a good buddy of mine, Kyler Reed, to demonstrate some of the resistance and plyometric exercises that can be paired and performed in a lower body complex training session. Kyler was a member of the Nebraska Cornhuskers football team where he played tight end between 2008 and 2012. He was an honorable mention all Big Ten conference selection in 2012 and in 2010, he broke the single season school record for touchdown catches by a tight end with eight total TDs. After graduating from Nebraska, he spent time playing professional football with the New England Patriots, Jacksonville Jaguars, and several indoor football teams. Most recently, Kyler was an assistant football coach and strength and conditioning coach at Highland Community College. So Kyler, I know you performed complex training when you were at Nebraska. Uh, do you feel it helped your overall athleticism and on-field performance? Yeah, I definitely did. It, it, I felt it made us more explosive, more powerful. And not only that, it, it uh, gave us a chance to compete, have fun in the weight room, in the Hawks facility where we could go out and be explosive. Right, something different to break the monotony in, in the workout. All right, so when you were a strength coach at Highland Community College and, and you were an assistant football coach there, uh, did you incorporate any type of complex training, you know, resistance training and plyometrics uh, into the workouts that you did with the uh, football players out at Highland? Yeah, we definitely did. Um, in Highland, we didn't have much equipment. We had a barbell and we had some space so we could do um, things like squats with tuck jumps and explosive movement or lunges and uh, split jumps like we're going to demonstrate here in a second. All right, so you ready to get your old body moving and demonstrating these exercises? Yeah. Like I, said, I know it's been a while, so... We'll, we'll see how springy you are. We'll, we'll see. Let's get to work. All right. All right, so Kyler just did a brief, you know, 10-minute warm-up. Got a good little glaze of sweat going, and we're ready to start this complex training session. Remember, with complex training, you are pairing a resistance training exercise with a biomechanically similar plyometric movement, okay? So we're mimicking the movement pattern with the plyo exercise after the resistance training movement. And you have a brief rest period in there between oh, four to eight minutes. There's not standard guidelines yet on that. Four to eight minutes is kind of a rough estimate. Just whenever the athlete feels fully recovered, that's when then you would go into the plyometric exercise. We don't want them fatigued going into the plyo, right? Because we want them to be explosive. Generally, before he demonstrates here, you know, we have a light load on the bar. Kyler can squat a lot more in 135. Um, but we're just doing this for demonstration purposes. Generally, you want to load the athlete with a weight that's between 75 to 90 percent of their one rep max, okay? So you want it to be heavy, right? And you're going to do between one to five reps to potentiate those lower extremity muscles, the hip extensors, the knee extensors, etc., that are so important for um, explosion and uh, force production as an athlete. Now again, you don't want them going to fatigue, so one to five reps, and you want them to have you know, a rep or two left in reserve. Typically, again, you're loading between 75 to 90% of the one rep max. So go ahead and step in the rack, Kyler. Lightweight? <laughs> lightweight, right? Again, it's just a demo. That is lightweight for him. Now, you can see he's kind of a high bar squatter. He's going to do five reps. He's got the bar higher up on his trap. A lot of times, people uh, that have a longer torso and shorter femur length, they're high bar squatters. But the main thing in the squat is that barbell has to be positioned over the midfoot for you to be balanced. So again, he's not going to fatigue. Normally, this would be loaded at, say, 87%, close to 90% of his one rep max. Five reps. Was that five? Good job. We'll rack it. And we're going to take a four to eight minute rest period, and we're going to go into depth jumps. All right, so the paired plyometric exercise that's going to be biomechanically similar to the barbell back squat that Kyler just did is going to be a depth jump off of this plyo box. All right, now you can use different height plyo boxes to make this more or less intense. Shorter plyo box is going to be less intense than having a, you know, 
a taller plyometric box, right? Now make sure your athletes can control the landing before they do any plyometrics, right? Your athletes need to have a good base of strength before doing plyometric exercises, right? You have to be able to absorb those ground reaction forces and the impact force, right? So they should be landing, again, in an athletic position without any valgus or varus stress on the knees. They shouldn't be caving in, right? They need to be able to land appropriately before doing this, all right? So what we're going to do here, Tyler's going to demonstrate two ways of doing this. The first one is a depth jump, and we're going to use a counter movement here. So he's going to start with his arms over his head, just step off the box. He's going to land with good hip and knee flexion and focus on vertical propulsion and jumping as high as possible. All right, that's the depth jump. Next one we're going to do, this is another variation of the depth jump, but call it a drop jump. Okay, so on this one what we're going to focus on is a short ground contact time, right? So when he, hold on, don't do it yet. When he jumps down or when he steps off the box, he's going to have a, um, he's going to focus on springing off the ground, right? And we're going to have less hip flexion and knee flexion. Again, a short ground contact time. And that's important in athletics because if you can produce force quickly into the ground, right, and, you, and your foot is not in contact with the ground, you can get that foot back up quickly. You can get into your next stride and you know, you're going to be moving a lot faster as a result. It's going to help with your turnover and things like that. So go ahead and demonstrate this variation, the drop, jump, spring, boom, there we go. So again, short ground contact time, we're producing force rapidly into the ground, and, and that's one of the things we're trying to develop with plyometrics. Now go ahead and just do five, right? Because we'd want to do a set of five after a four to eight minute rest of a heavy load barbell back squat. So we're going to do five. This first one's going to be the depth jump, boom. Focus on vertical jump height and explosion. Back to the box. All right, now a, now a drop jump. So this is the springy. Quick off the ground, quick, yep. Notice how he didn't use as much knee flexion or knee flexion and hip flexion there. Okay, now back to the depth jump. So we're really gonna drop down, control the landing. There's gonna be a greater ground contact time with the feet, but we're really focusing on exploding up, okay? This is rep four, right, coming up. Okay, so rep four. I'm alternating my. Yep. Too. That's good. Good point. So again, that's the springy one. Not as much knee and hip flexion. Reduced ground contact time. Now back to the deeper depth jump. Okay, counter movement. And up. Oh. Good job. How'd it feel? Feel old. You feel old and rusty, don't you? Oh yeah. It's no fun getting old. <laughs> All right, so the next resistance training exercise in this complex training workout session is going to be the dumbbell Bulgarian split squat. All right, so go ahead and grab your dumbbells there. Now you have to perform this on each leg. This is a unilateral exercise. All right, again, great for the glutes, the hamstrings. Those are the hip extensors and the quads, important muscles in athletic development to strengthen. So again, you can see how he's keeping the torso nice and upright. Basically, you're just dropping down on this front leg, flexing at the, at the knee, staying vertical. You're also getting a nice stretch on that right leg on the, through the hip flexors. All right, so we're doing a set of five here for each leg. Now, again, he's using a lighter load just because this is for demonstration purposes than what he would normally use in this workout. Normally, um, you know, I have it on the chart here to do 87% of your one rep max. So again, it's a set of five. You don't want to go all the way to fatigue. And then we'll get into the next uh, plyometric movement that is biomechanically similar to this dumbbell split squat. Okay, so the next paired exercise that's going to go along with and that's similar to the dumbbell Bulgarian split squat that Kyler just did is going to be split squat jumps, okay? The purpose of doing these is, again, focusing on vertical jump height, propulsion off the ground. So, again, really putting a lot of force down into the ground, whatever force you put into the ground, Newtonian laws, right? the ground is going to react with an equal and opposite force back up through the body. Okay, so again, he's going to demonstrate just one of these. Left leg in front here, counter movement, arms over the head. He's going to drop down, knee flexion, and explode, and land. Again, your athlete or client, subject, whoever's doing these, they need to be able to land under control, right? Now, with the other leg, when he gets into the set, you're going to see that he has a little bit of uh, instability. He's got some issues with the hip and the leg on that side. Uh, he had an injury there from prior years playing football. So 
again, you'll see a little difference there. All right, so go ahead, do your set of five. The right leg. Okay, and then we're going to go, we'll do the left, right? So immediately, it's a plyometric, we're springing off the ground. One more, good job. And remember, when you do these after the resistance training exercise, you don't want the athlete to be fatigued, okay? You want them to be fresh and explosive, okay? Good job. All right, so the next resistance training exercise in this complex training workout session is going to be the Romanian deadlift, also called the RDL. This is a hip hinge movement, all right, and it trains the, again, hip extensors, primarily low back, so the posterior chain. And again, really what you're going to see is he's going to hinge at the hips and really focus on driving through with the glutes, driving his hips forward horizontally. And then we're going to pair that with a horizontal uh, plyometric movement, okay? So go ahead, grab the barbell, step out. We'll get his feet positioned correctly. So you see his hands are just outside of the thighs. So get your feet to where they're kind of positioned, where you'd feel comfortable doing a vertical jump, all right? Then rotate the toes slightly out, so a little bit of hip external rotation, all right? Then you slightly unflex the knee, so just kind of unflex it. Um, I'm sorry, flex it, not unflex it, but flex the knee. Knee flexion, slight knee flexion. You're going to maintain that angle of knee flexion. Let the bar slide down and push your butt back, right? So do one more just as a demo. So he's maintaining the knee angle, sliding the bar down, keeping it close to his shins and his body, or his thighs and his body, and his glutes, and, and pushing his hips back, okay? Chest up, good form. So we'll do two more. So do a set of five. Okay, again, with normally this would be a heavy load. This is just a demo. But normally, you know, on the chart, I've got it being at 87% of his one rep max because you need that to get that potentiating effect, okay? And then we'll go into uh, the next plyometric movement. All right, so the plyometric exercise that's paired with the Romani Romanian deadlifts that Kyler just did four to five minutes ago, you know, he's had a good rest period, he's fully recovered, is going to be just some repeated barrier hops. All right, so we're focusing on short ground contact time, exploding off the ground horizontally, all right? The depth jumps and the split squat jumps were focused on vertical height and vertical propulsion. This is focused on horizontal, and why is that? Well, we're doing these after the Romanian deadlift because remember in that hip hinge movement, he was focused on driving those hips forward. So this is the biomechanically similar plyometric exercise that's paired with it. All right, so he's gonna demonstrate these again it's going to be five jumps, a set of five, and just short ground contact time, really exploding off the ground. So, and really using his arms, too, to propel him forward, all right? Bang, 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 bang. Great. All right, so the previous resistance training exercises and plyometric exercises in this complex training session have been all done in what's called the sagittal plane, right? So the sagittal plane is more you know, forward, backward movements. It involves a lot of, you know, hip, knee flexion and extension. So now we're going to work in a different plane of movement called the coronal or frontal plane, right? So this is going to be, uh, this next exercise, a alternating lateral lunge with the barbell. So go ahead and step onto the barbell, get it in good position up on your upper traps. He's going to step out. So you want alternating? And so, um, Actually, yes, alternating, so five to the right leg and then five to the left, okay? So he's going to lunge to the right. Again, nice upright chest. He's going to lunge to the left, All right? Gather himself, All right? Again, working the knee extensors, hip extensors. As he goes to the right there, he's getting a good stretch on the adductors of the left leg. Staying upright, balanced, driving off that leg. And you can see why this would be important for an athlete because a lot of times you're planting, cutting, changing direction. So you're developing strength here in that coronal or frontal plane. Is this your last one, I think? Yep. All right, great. All right, so the next plyometric exercise that's paired with the alternating barbell lateral lunges is going to be alternating single leg lateral jumps, all right? 
And again, this is focused on explosion and movement in that coronal or frontal plane, right? Being able to change direction laterally is important for somebody that, you know, like a football player. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do five lateral jumps off of each leg. Again, the athlete needs to be able to control their landing. Okay, so I'll have Kyler go ahead and demonstrate this. So start lateral jump left, land right, five off each leg. Two, three, three, four, five, five. Great. Um, that was five each leg, wasn't it? One extra. Okay, well, we got one extra in there. Five each leg. Now, if you have an athlete that's having trouble landing on the single leg and exploding off, because these can be difficult, what you can do is, can you show them the version where you would jump to the right or left and then land with both legs together again in the middle to gather yourself and then jump to the other leg? So you can land in the middle on both legs to gather yourself, okay? Going. Jump. Now, then back to the middle and land on both legs and then you're going to jump to the other side. Yep. Yeah, you can do that. Actually, but you would go start in the middle, jump right, and then you're going to land in the middle, jump left. Okay? Oh, so. Oh, so, so you're just landing in the middle between. Bam. But don't put that foot down there. And then so. come back to the middle. So boom, middle. Then you gather yourself, boom, middle. Yep, like that. There you got it. May feel a little more clumsy there. But again, it's for an athlete, you know, maybe you have somebody that's untrained, that's not as athletic, not as strong, um, and they're having trouble just landing on that one leg and exploding all the way to the other side, landing on the left leg. It gives you a chance to gather yourself in the middle, okay? Well, thanks for coming in today, Kyler, demonstrating these exercises. I know it's been a while since you did these back in your, in your playing days, but good job demonstrating. Uh, how can people contact you if they have any questions about strength training or football in general? You can contact me on Instagram at kspeed25 and also on Twitter, kspeed, but with four E's, 25. And thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Also, if you have any questions about the KU Exercise Science Program, you can contact me at jtaylor at ku.edu or by phone, 913-897-8516. Thanks again for watching this edition of Fitness Facts. <laughs>